Hello, kiddos. I'm Reverend Carol, your associate minister here at Unity of Austin. And I'm going to be reading the story today. You know, our last two lessons uh, were about the path of Jesus and how lead, that leads us to experience sacred community and our own natural inner joy. And this lesson helps us to understand that by following the path that Jesus took uh, can change us from feeling like we're limited or separate by feeling connected and like we can do just about anything. So I want to start off with our affirmation. And the affirmation is, the teachings of Jesus lead me to understand that I am one with all. You want to repeat that with me. We'll do it two more times. The teachings of Jesus lead me to understand that I am one with all. One more time. The teachings of Jesus lead me to understand that I am one with all. Now, the story is called Part of the Stars. So, Eric wished he could just go home. He had looked forward to coming to camp all summer, and now he wanted to leave. Nothing was going the way he had wanted, and it was only the second day. He wanted to be in the Eagle Cabin which was up the hill and had the newest bunks. But Eric was in the gopher cabin at the bottom of the hill. The campers in go gopher cabin had the longest walk to the dining hall and to the bathrooms. He didn't get a top bunk either. He was stuck in a lower bunk in the corner. On top of that, None of the kids in his cabin were from his church or his school. They were all strangers. The cabin leader seemed like a nice guy, but he was soft-spoken and a bit older than the other counselors. His camp name was Silent Sam. Eric thought Silent Sam was kind of boring compared to the other leaders who had nicknames like grizzly and crazy coyote. Today, Sam had them on a long hike along the river. Eric had lost his whistle. When they got back, dinner turned out to be vegetable soup instead of sp uh, the spaghetti he was looking forward to. As Eric sat on his bunk before going to bed, he really just wanted to go home. When everyone was in their sleeping bag, Silent Sam made an announcement. Tonight, there's supposed to be a meteor shower, which would be really cool to see. But it won't happen till about 2 a.m. in the morning. So get some sleep, and I'll wake you when it's time. We will walk out to the meadow for the best view. Everyone dress warmly and leave your flashlights in the cabin. One more thing, we will all stay quiet during the whole thing. No talking. Eric thought a meteor shower might be a neat thing to see, but walking on outside in the dark sounded scary, not fun. He fell asleep quickly, and the next thing he knew, Sam was waking him up. All the boys got dressed in the dark. Eric put on his thick socks, warm sweatshirt, and jeans. A couple of the boys began whispering, and Sam silently reminded them about keeping quiet. Then he led them all outside. The other cabins were dark, and there were no other kids around. Eric wondered if they were asleep or already outside watching the meteor shower. And the kids from Gopher Cabin followed Sam down the trail towards the meadow. The meadow offered a clear view of the sky. 
Eric was surprised he could see so well in the dark without his flashlight. The half moon was shining down and there were millions of stars. Other kids and leaders were spread out over the big metal, but everyone was keeping very quiet. Sam motioned to the gopher cabin group to lie down on the grass close to him. Eric could sense something different about Silent Sam. He seemed excited, but very calm, and his smile was kind. The grass was cool, but Eric's sweatshirt kept him warm. As he looked up, as he looked up at the sky full of stars, he felt happy for the first time since camp <clears throat> started. He was glad they weren't allowed to talk. Eric could feel all the kids who were sharing the night's adventure, and it seemed more friendly somehow to be silent together. Suddenly, Eric noticed a quick flash across the sky, a shooting star. Scientists called them meteors, but Eric preferred the name shooting star. Then there was a couple of more and then several more. Eric didn't want to blink. He didn't want to miss any. He heard several kids gasp, wow, but they quickly became quiet again. It lasted a couple of hours. The meteors just kept coming. They flashed a bright streak of light and then disappeared only to have several more appear. Eric felt like he was flying through space with them. His body felt connected to the earth, but his heart felt like it was with the shooting stars. He wasn't sleepy at all. In fact, he felt wide awake and energized. Eric was aware of the awe and wonder of all the other kids and leaders there. It was as if all their bodies were connected through the earth and their hearts were all together in space with the stars, shining, brilliant star shine. It didn't matter who was in which cabin or who was friends with whom. The busy activities of the day seemed like a dream and the night and the stars were more important and more real. The shooting stars gradually stopped and Silent Sam tapped Eric on the shoulder. He reluctantly got up with the other kids and walked toward the cabin behind Sam. He didn't want to look down at the trail. He wanted to keep looking up at the stars forever. When they got back to the cabin, Sam silently directed them to get back into their bunks and Eric gazed out on the window at the stars for a long time before he fell asleep, knowing tomorrow would be a better day. Hmm. Have you ever seen a shooting star? I have. It's been a long time. Do you like to go out and look up at the stars? On a clear night, you can see a whole bunch of them. And if you drive out away from the city, out in the country, you can see a whole lot of shooting stars. And you know, that same star that you're seeing shining above those millions of stars, someone else maybe is probably seeing those same stars, whether they're across town or across the state or across the country. We're all connected. I hope you enjoyed the story and the background with all the millions of stars. We really miss you here, all of your YFM teachers and I, and we hope you are doing really well. So that's it for this morning. And I'll ask you to join me in closing with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. 
the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you.